welcome all in this section we are going to look at cold springing we'll look into three topics what is cold springing why cold springing is required actual use of cold spring right so let us start with this agenda in this in the description box you can get the link of quiz also so you can check your uh, knowledge on this topic so let's start with the agenda now let us try to understand what is cold springing Cold springing is a process of intentional deformation. What do you mean by intentional deformations? There is a deformation which we induce intentionally. Right now, how we can induce this deformation? When we are cutting the spools, we can keep it short or long. Okay. These shorts and long spools, which we intentionally induce, will cause in producing the desired initial displacement so we what we are doing we are intentionally inducing the deformation with respect to displacement and stress right so in indirectly we can say cold springing is a intentional stressing and elastic deformation of piping system so during erection cycle to permit the system to attain favorable reaction now why we are doing this Okay, we want to have some stresses inside the system so that when there are reactions during operation, these can be uh, these can be utilized to get the negative impact, right? So, what it is doing here? Why it is required? It will reduce the hot stresses. We know when there is a uh, creep uh, formation creep uh, scenario inside the system there will be generation of hot stresses those particular uh, systems were prone to hot stresses we intentionally induce cold stresses so that these can be neutralized then reduce the hot reaction same is there when we are connecting it with the equipment there may be chances the system where there are chances of hot reactions these intentionally induced cold uh, uh, deformation will mitigate those hot reactions and when we know the system is going to move uh, because of some hot stresses inside the uh, piping system then we initially in advance we provide uh, this intentional deformation so that the movement is controlled so this is what cold springing is and this is why we require this now let us see what is the actual use of cold spring so the general belief is that additional creep damage caused by initial thermal expansion so we are talking about those piping system which are prone to very high temperature which are going to experience very high temperature and this will be repeated for longer period so there will be high temperature, low temperature, high temperature. So the, those system will be prone to thermal expansion stresses. So we already know that these kind of stresses will be there, right? To just to mitigate that, we induce cold springing into it. Okay. So so that we can bring it in the allowable limit. Now we know that there is a creep damage there may there, there may be chances of creep damage so we have to take some uh, uh, precautions in advance so we go for cold springing but that is uh, something which is mentioned in the code that we don't need to take undue advantage of cold springing just to reduce the stresses so we have to be very cautious when we are using the cold springing control of movement in space is always a secondary priority first one is just to control the thermal expansion stresses so what we are trying to say the real gain of cold springing has become the reduction of hot reactions all the with all the connected equipment right so this is actual use of cold springs so in this section we talked about what is cold springing why cold springing is required and actual use of cold spring so thank you for watching you can look into the quiz section the link for the same is given in the description box so thank you for watching see you in the next part